Second Earth Alternative, this is Felipe Osario. So it's been a while, it's been like two weeks. I've uh, had a full-time job. So I, I'm just kind of trying to pile on these episodes uh, when I get a chance. And um, I have to say in the two weeks, I'm absolutely shocked how much has happened in the political world. I mean, for starters, Bernie Sanders had a heart attack. I, I'm, I'm very happy that he's, he's okay. We had President Trump, who is being possibly impeached, or at least there's impeachment proceedings happening right now from the Democratic side. And then there's Joe Biden and the, I'm, I mean, what can I say? Just keep him away from the Ukrainian girls? Anyways, now you see why this channel got away from politics. It's just an absolute freaking shitstorm. I don't know which side the truth lands. It's just something that I don't want to be part of. And in a way, I'm kind of glad we did because I think uh, this channel has actually been on the right track, uh, so to speak. Look, we're not infallible. We're going to make mistakes. I think there was uh, a moon episode where after hearing some comments, I'm starting to wonder whether it's possible that the object in question might actually be uh, uh, some kind of animal, like a, a bird that was darting super straight or maybe a bat. I mean, I have to consider that. So, so you know, when, when things like that happen, I, I, I want to admit to the audience, but there has been a lot of things that have indeed come true uh, and things that we, we, we didn't even expect would come true. And one particular idea that I really want to talk about that I'm really thinking this might be, and, and I know you're going to probably tune away when you hear this, but it could just be the biggest marine fossil ever discovered lying right there on Google Earth. I mean, I, I'm, I'm being honest. When I saw this, I was so convinced that this was a fossil, and I wasn't looking for fossils. I was just out there trying to examine like human remains or if there's some kind of civilization in Antarctica or some previous unknown type of humanoid civilization. Who knows anything in Antarctica? And it so happens that I found what I thought to be a fossil. So I decided to make a paleontology episode stating that this huge fossil uh, looks remarkably like a nectosaur. Now, ichthyosaurs were thought to be the largest marine reptiles. They were estimated to be somewhere between 65 to 70 feet. The issue was our fossil in Google Earth looked to be closer to 115 feet. So we still made an episode though. We thought, you know, maybe, just maybe, they're a little bit larger than previously expected. A year later, the Smithsonian Magazine and the National Geographic Magazine published, they published this story that based on jaw fragments that they discovered from some excavation in the 1990s, the ichthyosaurs had to be at least 33% larger than previously thought. So that would actually break it over 100 feet and would put our 115 feet fossil within the range of possibly something that's just a little bit larger than the now known limits of ichthyosaurs. Now what amazed me the most was this unbelievable coincidence that the only paleontology episode that we made so happened to be the paleontology story of the year. The next year. So though that episode wasn't very well received, I did still want to bring this up because just a few days ago I ran into this article and this kind of shocked me a little bit because you know I'm not a paleontologist, I don't know anything about Antarctica, I just thought I found a fossil in Antarctica via Google Earth and then here's an article and it says Antarctica Breakthrough Bizarre 250 million year old discovery exposes shock past. So, it's according to this article, it's basically stating that there are 250 million year old fossils being discovered in the very continent that I thought I discovered a fossil. Now, right down here it says, we spent about two months in Antarctica and found fossils of animals that are close to reptiles a bunch of fossils which are amphibian relatives and even more fossils that are distant relatives of mammals. So at least one classification of the fossils that they, that they discovered were reptiles. 
in Antarctica. Now, ichthyosaurs are marine reptiles, and I did some research. Well, I actually, to be honest, I, I really knew this because I had done this research before, but check this out. So if you just go to Google Earth and you type ichthyosaur, right? So it says here, if ichthyosaurs thrived much of the Mesozoic era based on fossil evidence, they first appeared around 250 million years ago. And at least one species survived until about 90 million years ago. So 250 million year old fossils are discovered in Antarctica, they're reptiles. And I randomly discovered a fossil that I thought was uh, perhaps the biggest marine fossil ever discovered on Antarctica. So to me, that's just a lot of coincidences for a story that to some, it just might have been bogus when I initially stated this, like April 15, 2017. Now, if you want to check out the fossil, here are the coordinates. This is the episode that I made. Biggest marine fossil ever discovered. And this, I'm telling you, it was a year before the Smithsonian Magazine published that. So yeah, just go to those coordinates and check it out for yourself. If you don't believe me that this looks like not just an ichthyosaur, but something like a shonisaur. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. These are ichthyosaurs right here. Okay. Some of the biggest ichthyosaurs ever discovered looked something like this. So, you know what? Let's just uh, show you the fossil on Google Earth because this is uh, pretty impressive. There it is. Now, what's interesting is I actually did uh, an analysis of the area, and if you look at all these other rocks, this particular formation has its own unique, unique light signature, meaning you can actually condense all the light signatures in Photoshop and make that the only object that appears, which to me tells me that maybe it's not made out of the same sedimental rocks, as the other surrounding area, which perhaps could indicate that this is a different type of material, maybe a fossil. Now, when you zoom in, there are some really interesting features. And let's see if we can get a more top down approach here. How do we do that? Oh, there we go. So this is a completely top down. And as as we zoom in, I want to showcase some really interesting features. First of all, the beak cavity is very distinct. You can even see the two pointed ends. You can see the large circular cavity in its skull. Now, this triangle really interested me because this triangle is more like a hole. And if you look at the skulls, you actually see that there is perhaps where the fins were. I'm not sure how, how these animals, how the anatomy of these animals function exactly, but Somewhere in this area, there seemed to have been a lack of material. And I'm wondering if this is that. We see a possible pectoral fin over here. We see a possible second one up here. And we see a interesting tail with the bottom end being a little bit longer than the end. And what's even more interesting is if you take a screen capture of this, and then you do analysis on Photoshop just to break down these color channels more. It's it's kind of interests me that this starts looking rather like a fossil. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you guys can make your own judgments. Uh, go to the coordinates. Check it out for yourself. If it is what we think it is, it's kind of a big discovery. It's the biggest marine fossil ever discovered. So definitely uh, please share this to your friends and family members if you... Uh, think that this is anything and uh look so something else that we also talked about a long time ago something else that we've been mentioning over and over again this is an idea that that's not ours initially it's, it was graham hancock at least that's when i heard about it and so something that he was talking about often was that there was a comet strike that might have happened in greenland and the estimated date was to, well at first it was twelve thousand five hundred years but then it was updated to twelve thousand eight hundred years we even made an episode uh talking about Atlantis being possibly sunken by this. We talked about maybe the Neanderthals might have been extinct due to this. The Venus dolls perhaps being the last lineage, like symbolic representation of the Neanderthal female figures. If you haven't seen that episode, it has not broken a thousand views. And it's one that's really, I think, very interesting if you're into that type of stuff. So there's a lot that this comment uh, brought about, could have brought about in human history. It's, it's something that we talked a lot about. And sure enough, we get this article, 
Here's more evidence that Earth got hit by something huge 12,800 years ago. New evidence from South Africa is adding further credence to the idea that a large asteroid or comet struck Earth during the Pleistocene, an event that possibly triggered the extinction of many large animals while also disrupting human populations at a global scale. That was our theory only a couple weeks ago that Neanderthals might have been close to being extinct around the times that it was initially thought they were extinct around 40,000 years ago, but that the last dying lineage of male Neanderthals might have carried or might have had a propensity to, propensity to create these Neanderthal female figurines. Now, just for a second, let's just imagine that perhaps Neanderthal females were more regarded than males and maybe they were held captive by certain homo sapiens, thus the intermixing. If you were to consider the idea, then Neanderthal females would be a little bit more rare than Neanderthal males. It would make sense to see these, these cousins of ours having these dolls representing the last female Neanderthals. And the idea is that during 40,000 years ago to 12,000 years ago, that was the age of extinction of Neanderthals. I mean, we, I think there were fossils discovered a perfectly hybrid Neanderthal and Homo sapien that were 26, 23,000 years ago. So that couldn't be possible if there weren't pockets of fully genetic Neanderthals, you know, past the date that scholars tell us they had been extinct. So I do think the Neanderthals were killed by this comet, or at least the last remaining Neanderthals or hybrids, which some speculate Gobekli Tepe could have been composed of, which happened to be 12,800 years, just about this time of the comet. So yeah, that's why we make this uh, episodes because it's interesting stuff. It's things that go back to our planet. It's, it's our history. It's, it's who we are. Um, even if we are in a great goddamn rat cage being looked by these watchers. Yeah, so we should know about that, right? Please share this channel. I think our top video has 1.3 million views. Our last video has only 200 views. So if you like this content, if you want this information out, uh, yeah, just share it to your friends, tell everybody about this channel, and I'll see you guys again later this week. This is Felipe Osario, signing out.